In this lesson, we're going to discuss how to write multiple representations of a polar point. Recall that in the Cartesian xy plane, there is only one way to represent any point. For example, the point in the third quadrant, negative 3, negative 2. That is the only way to identify that point at that location. In the polar plane, however, there are infinitely many ways to represent any single point. And because there are infinitely many representations of a single point, typically in the problems we'll see, you'll be told that your angle in the end should lie in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. This just allows you to better limit your answers, typically to the original point and three additional ones, instead of having infinitely many more for you to come up with. There are two ways by which we can write the different representations of a single polar point. One way is to do it graphically. You can plot the polar point, and then you're going to determine the coterminal angle to that which you are given. That will give you one additional representation of that point. Then you draw an auxiliary line into the opposite or diagonal quadrant, if you want to think of it that way. When you do that, R is now negated. You then determine two coterminal angles formed by that ray, in which one angle will be positive and one will be negative. The other alternative for writing the multiple representations of a polar point is to think of it algebraically. Starting with the point r comma theta, that's going to be equivalent to r and then theta plus or minus 2 pi. Whether you add or subtract 2 pi depends upon what you start with and the limitations that in the end your angle needs to lie between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. The other two pairs of coordinates can be found by negating the original r, then adding pi to theta and subtracting pi from theta. Again, what you will have to watch is that those angles you arrive at in the end do lie in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. It is possible that depending upon what you're given, instead of adding pi and subtracting pi, perhaps you'll have to add pi twice or maybe subtract pi twice. So let's look at a couple of examples. The first example we're going to consider is the polar point 3, negative 2 pi over 3, and we're going to write three equivalent points such that the angle in the end, as we've said, is going to lie in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. Let's begin by trying this one graphically, then we'll look at it algebraically. If we begin by plotting the point, remember we begin with our angle, negative 2 pi over 3 would be down here in the lower left, aligned with 4 pi over 3, and that has an r value of 3. 1, 2, 3. So the point would lie right here. Now that was the negative angle. The first equivalent point that we're going to write, we will keep 3 as the r value, but now we're going to think of it as the positive angle. And the positive angle of that, of course, is 4 pi over 3. So there is one of the three equivalent points that you need to find. The other two points are going to have negative r values. Now remember what happens with a negative r we end up taking the point and sliding it away from the angle that we were targeting. So we're going to slide this point that we plotted across the pole to be three circles out. So that puts us right here. Now we're going to come up with the angles for that point. One is obviously pi over three, and the other, if we do the negative angle, is going to be a negative five pi over three. And now you have your three equivalent points to that which you were given. Now think about why these are all the same. If we wanted to plot these last two points, think about how we would do that. We would start with the angle. So we would have pi over 3, but then since it's a negative r, 
we're going to slide the point diagonally away from pi over 3. That puts us down where the blue point is. Likewise, if we were to plot the point with the negative angle, we would have a negative 5 pi over 3, which would be up here. But once again, we have a negative r, so we need to slide it diagonally away from that angle. And once again, we land where we plotted the original point. Now, if you wanted to do this algebraically, what you would do is take the original point, and remember, if we keep the same r, we're going to add or subtract 2 pi. Now, we can't subtract 2 pi because that would put us below negative 2 pi. So we're going to have to add 2 pi. Remember in doing that, common denominators, so you're adding 6 pi over 3, which gives us 4 pi over 3, which is the same as that point we had found. Now we're going to negate the r, go back to the original angle, and add pi and subtract pi. So if we add pi, we have pi over 3, which was that other point we found. And finally, if you subtract pi, that is subtract 3 pi over 3 with your common denominators, you get negative 5 pi over 3. Either way is acceptable. It's whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Let's try another example. So this is 16 5 pi over 2. Because of the large r value, I think I'm going to have to scale my concentric circles. I can't even do two. So I guess I'll have to go each circle out is four. So that would be four, eight, 12, 16. Now five pi over two, remember that's two and one half pi. So starting over on the right, there's one pi, two pi, another half does put you up at pi over two. And remember I'm scaling this so that each concentric circle is four so that's 4, 8, 12, 16 right here. So that's my original point. Now this one, remember we want our angles to be in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. And of course what we're given is larger than 2 pi. So we are going to have to write two points, both with a positive r value. And if you take a look at this, obviously one of those has an angle of pi over 2. If we think of the negative angle that goes with that, that would be negative 3 pi over 2. Now if we were to slide the point across, that puts us right here where the x is, and now we're, that would give us a negative r, and now we're going to come up with the angles, one positive and one negative, that coincide with that point where the x is. Well, we could do negative pi over 2, and thinking in terms of a positive angle, we could do 3 pi over 2. If you wanted to think about this algebraically, remember we go back to our beginning point. We're going to add 2 pi and subtract 2 pi. Now when we add 2 pi though, that just puts us even more over 2 pi, so we can't do that. We are going to have to subtract 2 pi, so that gives us pi over 2. Now we could subtract 2 pi again. Now from pi over 2, we get negative 3 pi over 2. Really what you're doing here is you're making use of everything you learned in terms of those coterminal angles. Now if we switch to a negative r value, once again we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to add pi and subtract pi. Again, if we add pi, we're even more over 2 pi. So this is one in which we're going to have to subtract pi twice. So if we subtract pi, that gives us 3 pi over 2. That last answer we had arrived at over there. To determine the angle that goes with our last point, again with an r value of negative 16, you have to think about this because if we simply subtract pi again, well that doesn't put us in the right place. We know that negative 16, 3 pi over 2 would in the end put us in the correct place. So this is one you do have to think about a little bit, and you might just have to come up with something coterminal to 3 pi over 2, which of course would be negative pi over 2. 
it's always a great idea when you do these algebraically to think about them graphically and what these points would actually look like. We know the first two are correct. If we double check on the last two with a negative r, if we were to plot 3 pi over 2 and then an r of negative 16, that does indeed put us where we wanted to be. If we were to plot negative pi over 2 and then an r of negative 16, again, it does put us where we want to be.